Good evening, everybody. So, Advent is a time of preparation, and it's a nice time preparing for Christmas, usually. And so, it's a time of preparation also for us spiritually. So, when I think of uh, Advent and Christmas, I think of preparing for Christ. And so we're happy, or I'm happy here to be able to share with you my own thoughts about what Advent means for me and what it might, whatever way it might help you to prepare also for the coming of Christ. So that's basically what I'm here for. And to let you know also that during this time, it's a time of prayer, time of penance a little bit, but especially it's a time of prayer, praying for people who are maybe struggling with uh, coping for Christmas, coping for Advent, preparing for Christmas in that way. So, because it can be stressful. And uh, I have great memories of when I was a child, and I remember back, you know, when we were always busy preparing. Uh, my mother would be busy preparing with the fowl, getting them ready for the market, getting them um, ready for sending to friends in England, um, preparing, with making Christmas cakes and Christmas puddings and of course doing the decorations and preparing the decorations. And it was all for Christmas. We thought mainly it was for Santa Claus, but uh, eventually we got to know that it was for the coming of Christ, you know, so. And I have a very good memory of when I was young with my brothers uh, in preparing for this. So I'll tell you about that in a minute. But basically the Christ, there's the coming of Christ in three forms. First he came 2,000 years ago. Then he'll come at the end of time, and whenever we die, whenever we're called to the Lord in the last day. And then he comes every day in our everyday lives. And it's important during this time of Advent that we can prepare for him and, and realize that he is coming and that we can be ready to meet him. And i just tell you a story about when I was a kid with my two brothers, my mother, um, used to send it all up to bed on time because through the joking that Santa wouldn't come if we were up late. But when we go to bed early, of course, we would start chatting and wouldn't go to sleep for ages. And one night we were arguing and talking and, and she crept up the stairs and eventually she was at the door before we realised it. And uh, she said, wouldn't you think you three guys would do something uh, for Christmas now? And we said, what? like, what? Sure, we're in bed. Well, you could do something for Jesus to welcome him. And so I said, like, what? Well, she said, you could say the rosary or something like that. So I, being the eldest, I started the rosary, but within a few minutes, <laughs> the three of us were asleep. <laughs> so uh, that was probably Mother's plan as well, like, that we'd get to sleep. <laughs> but anyway, we woke up in the morning and she asked us for, during breakfast, what do we do? How many rosaries did we say? <laughs> so. We weren't able to say we had even said one, but um, so every other night then we said we'd say the, our own bunch of rosaries, of, uh, of Hail Marys. So we had the Hail Marys and of course someone would fall asleep, but next morning and we would have another big argument about who said the most Hail Marys and we were trying to cheat. But mother would always say, well, you know, you can't cheat Jesus because he, he already knows how many Hail Marys you said anyway. So, Eventually, we had to be honest, and we said our own Hail Marys <laughs> until we fell asleep. But the point is, we had something prepared for Jesus in the crib on Christmas morning that we were able to go and say to Jesus, well, this is my gift for you now. So that was one way of preparing for Christmas, preparing through prayer. So that's um, just a story that I had from my childhood. But the scripture tells us as well, I read a small passage of scripture, just with only three lines, to share what Scripture, what scripture tells us. It's in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 to 5. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of Yahweh, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley will be raised up, every mountain and hill will be laid low. The stumbling blocks shall become level and the rugged places smooth. The glory of Yahweh will be revealed and all people together will see it, for the mouth of God has spoken the word of the Lord. So that's a nice passage of scripture that reminds us that we have to, as it tells us, fill in the potholes, prepare for the Lord, uh, remove the 
uh, stumbling blocks, the, the barriers that are there. And I have another story that when I went to Ghana first in, in, uh, in 1977, I was there for 13 years, but during that time, uh, every now and again, the Minister of State would come on a visit to, to the region. And of course, every time he came, the graders were brought out, the roads were <laughs> made smooth, the, all the potholes were filled in. And we used to be saying to the people, you know, why do you do that? So the guy is, doesn't give you anything. And, and you're preparing for him as if he was the king and if he did a lot of things. But they said, oh, Father, we have to prepare for him because otherwise, we, we, if we don't prepare, we're insulting him. And that would not be good. So it's the same way with Jesus. We need to prepare for him. And the, the, the scripture tells us there in Isaiah, how to prepare, to remove any barriers we have in our lives, make smooth those things that we think are potholes, like our sinfulness, our selfishness, and all those areas that needs to be filled in and need to be improved upon in our lives. Now, often Jesus comes, of course, and we don't recognize him. We, 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 we fail to see him sometimes because we're too busy, or we think he's only in our friends, but sometimes he can be in the difficult situations that we meet in our lives. And we have to be, and so for that, we have to slow down and ponder on those events that come up that sometimes we don't even like. But Jesus can be there with a message for us, and we can meet him in that situation. But also nowadays, there's so many people coming into this country who are lonely, who are uh, refugees, and they need our care and our help because Jesus was a stranger too. And when he was on earth, he was on the margins, he, he, he was a refugee, he, he had to go off to Egypt when he was only a baby uh, because of be, uh, the, the, the situation he was in at the time. So there are people like that and we have to ask ourselves, how can I show that I'm ready to meet Jesus in those people? Am I, am I reaching out to them? So that's where we can find Jesus and meet him. And there are a lot of barriers and uh, obstacles there in, 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 in that situation. For example, there's so much racism around us and, and we can uh, remove those kind of barriers by showing kindness, giving extra time to people or even just saying hello to them. So there's a, there's a great opportunity for us there to welcome Jesus. Um, and the, the, these are people from different cultures, different backgrounds to ourselves, mainly from Africa, from Asia and from South America. So. Sometimes that's where we might meet Jesus now during this time of Advent. So we look out for him. We we'll see, we'll see him there. It's all about our attitude, preparing our attitude and changing our attitude during the time of Advent. And also we can remove a barrier sometimes by getting, trying to like people maybe we dislike and uh, changing our attitude towards them. Because St. Ignatius tells us that the amount of love you have for Jesus is the same as what you have for the person you dislike most. So that's worth thinking about. And also, you know, even our Christian communities also needs to prepare for Jesus. Um, if, if the community has people who are jealous and divided and non-cooperative, like Jesus isn't present or can't be seen in those kind of communities. Whereas we noticed there in COVID-19 when it started first, the first wave, there were so many people so thrilled with the atmosphere and the love and the cooperation that was present in their, in their community. And that was because they noticed they were vulnerable and that's where they saw Jesus and they were helping him there. As I said, there are lots of preparation going on for Christmas during this time of Advent. But sometimes, as we know from Pope Francis, we are searching in the wrong places for Jesus. Sometimes we are so busy and we notice it now, like uh, it gets so stressful trying to do the shopping every year, trying to meet deadlines and get uh, cards sent to people and so many things. And Saint Pope Francis tells us that, you know, sometimes we're looking for Jesus in the wrong places. We are too busy. And COVID-19 showed us that when you slow down, take time, look around, you notice Jesus present in the in creation, in the flowers, in the trees, in so many areas. But um, he, Pope Francis recently um, issued uh, his recent encyclical called Total Fraternity, where he speaks of uh, the uh, building of the kingdom 
here on earth by people loving one another and sharing with one another and being kind to one another. And he, uh, he's he said he was inspired by St. Francis because St. Francis did a very unusual thing. It was during the time of the uh, Crusades and everyone was hating the Turks and the Muslims. But so St. Francis went to visit the um, uh, leader of Egypt, the Sultan of Egypt. And when he was there, he didn't argue with him. He went and chatted with him in a nice, kind way and built up a relationship with him. And that's what St. Francis did. And that's what uh, Pope Francis is telling us now in total fraternity that we need to be doing to all those people that we disagree with. And in that way, we are building God's kingdom. That kingdom that he, spoke about, he speaks about several times in the Bible. God te or, uh, Jesus tells us about the kingdom of peace, of justice, of love and fraternity. And even in the Bible, in I say also, it tells us that the, the, even the animals will get on well together. The lion will lie down with the cub and the leopard with the kid and they'll all be one. But for us as human beings, we have to give that example. So what's the way forward? I've already mentioned prayer and I have mentioned the scriptures, that that's some way that we can prepare for the coming of Jesus. But also it's very important to be aware of our attitude and our hearts, what is in them. And so in order to do something positive, it's very important to reach out to others. And that's what I would be also suggesting, that those people who we don't know or never met before, people from a different culture, if we see them on the street, it, it takes a bit of courage to just stand up and say, hello, how are you? And uh, wish you a happy Christmas or whatever. But even to say hello during these times now as we prepare for Christmas during this season of Advent, they'll be absolutely thrilled. And just to give them that boost of saying hello because they're different, that is all, that's a, that's a way forward, I think, that we, we could do during this time of Advent. So what I'm saying is make that effort. Just go out there, reach out to people, say hello to them, even say a sentence like, have a good Advent. They might even ask you, what is Advent? And you'll be able to tell them now that it's a time for preparing for Jesus. And they'll be happy about that. But just at all, so give them a lift just to say, well done or happy, happy Christmas to them. My other memories of Christmas, of course, is the, and Advent is the lights. Everywhere, always the night, a few nights before Christmas, we had candles lighting on the windows. And we used to ask our mother, what are they for? We thought it was just to welcome Santa Claus, but they, she used to say to us, that's to welcome Jesus uh, and Mary and Joseph. And so we try to welcome him into our homes as well. And the way we behave and look uh, towards one another in our homes, that is the way we welcome Jesus. And so now it's very important for us to do that. And all of us as well, at these times, everyone has a light out in the street, or we have a light on the window, and especially we have these Christmas lights, and they're all very beautiful. Now, when you see those lights this Christmas, or this Advent, as you prepare for Christmas, let it be a reminder to you that Christ is coming, number one. Secondly, let it be a reminder to you also that your light, you need to show your light to others, and this is your being Christ to others. And that is a very important uh, way of giving your light to others. And so that is the uh, message about the light, that, that we are the light now. Let our light shine, let others see the light of Christ through us. And I'd like to finish then with a short poem, just a very few lines, which sums up the three comings of Jesus. Um, and it's part of our bravery, this. Creator of the stars of night, the people's everlasting light, Redeemer, save us all, O oh, hear your servants when they call. As once through Mary's flesh you came to save us from our sins and shame. So now, Redeemer, by your grace, come heal again our fallen race. And when on that last judgment day we rise to glory from decay, then come again, O oh, Saviour blessed, and bring to us eternal blessed. Amen.